in today's demonstration, we're going to try to make banana brandy. I had posted a video some time ago on uh, making banana brandy, and I thought I had it down pretty good, but uh, the results weren't quite what I was looking for, so I put all the corrections that I could in the video. So today we're going to take all that information and try to recreate this again and hope we get a better job done. So we have our bananas. This time we're using some ripe bananas. We've let these bananas sit out to uh, soften up and they should be a lot easier to work with this time. So we'll start uh, by peeling our bananas. And again, you might be able to find some ripe bananas at your uh, local store for pennies on the dollar. And if you time it right, you can find ripe bananas and they're usually half the cost of uh, fresher bananas. Okay, so we have our bananas in the bowl. Take care of our skins here. Okay, so that's one thing we're doing different from the last time. We're using ripe bananas. We're going to do a lot of the other steps the same, though. And we're going to break down the bananas. First, we're going to use the old potato masher here. Much softer than the last time. We're going to add a little water to it to help thin it out. Now we're going to mix it up, break everything down as best we can. So this time we have a much better substance to play with compared to the yellow bananas. The ripe bananas make a much better uh, batter if you would and this time we're going to add some sugar water to the mix This is going to give us a much higher potency of alcohol. We also need our activated yeast. That's about three generous tablespoons of sugar. And we will add the same amount in yeast. Top it with a little warm water. Let's 
stir it up. And we will wait for that to foam up, telling us that our yeast is active. Okay, so now you can see our yeast has really risen really good. We're going to add that now. Blend it in. Now, I'm going to add some more sugar water to this. However, I'm going to put it, we're almost done, so I'm going to put it in a container. If all you have is a soup pot with a lid, go ahead and use that. If you have a better means of, of for a container, use it. I have this Articat cooler. The lid is locks on there pretty good. It allows the gases to escape, and it doesn't let animals in. So uh, we're done with this now. We're just going to pour it in there. sugar water to it. Okay now, we have a lot of room in this. Someone had asked me about uh, foaming in here. And using a substance like bananas, you're going to get a lot of foaming. So this container has about this much room for foaming as this uh, ferments. So now all we got to do is let this sit for just a little bit, uh, about 30 minutes or so, and we'll get back to it and we'll see how it's doing. And as you can see now, We've let it sit a while and we've got bubbles, got a little foaming. Our banana brandy mash is working quite well. After we let this sit for a good solid week or so, then we need to strain all the chunks out. Ooh, look at there. There, we got some really good foaming now. Look at that. Look at all that foaming we got now. Okay, so now this is sat for a week. We're going to take a little taste test here. It has a very, very strong alcohol content now, but there's still some sugar left in there because you can still taste the sweetness. So we're going to, I uh, added a gallon of water to this um, after I got it fermenting, and so now I'm going to add like uh, another gallon to it and a little more yeast. The extra water will help the yeast get all the sugar um, 
converted into alcohol because we're at our maximum percentage of alcohol in here if we add more water that will lower the alcohol percentage and it will allow the rest of the sugar to be converted so that's what we're going to do okay so now our yeast is activated we're going to dump that in there followed by a gallon of hot water put the cap back on it and let it sit for another week Okay, so now we've let it set for another week with the extra water to uh, make sure we have all the sugar used up. It looks a little clearer, a little less chunky. It looks like a lot of more banana was broken up and actually converted into alcohol. Let's take a little taste here. This time we have a banana taste which we've had all along um, we have an alcohol taste and we have a lot less sweetness virtually zero sweetness so I would say that this is as ready as it's going to get so now we'll take the next step and we will filter this and then we can put it in our still okay so now to uh, set up for the straining we have a big soup pot that also doubles as uh, my newer still and we have a couple of spaghetti strainers we have one that fits perfectly into the uh, soup pot and then we have another one that fits inside of that and uh, that'll work as a, a double screen giving us two filtrations at the same time I mean if you don't have something like this if you don't have this much uh, stuff don't worry about it just get it as clean as you can I also have one of these uh, screen strainers that I'm going to use and we also have some uh, cheesecloth. Now this is the one thing that I would use that I would make sure to get uh, most of all. If you can only, say you only have that spaghetti strainer right there, filter it once or twice without a cheesecloth and then your last couple of times filtering it, line this with the cheesecloth and that should get it as uh, good as you're going to get it and then you're ready for distillation if you can see but a lot of our banana ended up on the bottom that's always a good sign every time I run something with solids in it first it floats to the top and then when it's done it sinks to the bottom so this is a great indicator that everything is as done as we're going to get it Those bananas were broken down greatly. Really good job. We have a lot of banana left over in our uh, cooler, so we're going to give that a really good rinse. Because we're going to have to, to, to filter this again, we're going to have to trade places. We're going to have to take the contents from here and pour it back into here and uh, to filter it a couple more times. So first I gotta wash this out, and this looks like we hit the limit. Yep, yep, we can't put any more in there. So we'll get that done, we'll get everything cleaned up, and then we'll get the second and third and fourth and whatever other filtrations that we need to do. Okay, so now the cooler is cleaned out, and we'll uh, refilter everything.
Okay, now we're going to have to wash these out so that they're clean enough to take another straining. This is going to take a while, so just be patient, and we'll get back to this. We'll have to slowly let it drip like a coffee maker. So we'll get back to it. Rinse the cheesecloth out, and we'll start it again. Okay, now we'll rinse this out and we'll give it one more shot. Okay, we now have a substance that is ready for a distillation, or you can try it as a wine, a nice banana wine. It's up to you. So there we have it. Our uh, banana wine or banana mash for moonshine. <laughs>